This is a simple tutorial on setting up Jellyfin Media Server on Raspberry Pi 4 from scratch in 10 minutes. This is the best media server for home and can be built by yourself using Raspberry Pi 4 or Pi 3. The only requirement of this video, you need a Raspberry Pi 4 with 4 gigs of RAM or higher, an Ethernet cable for internet connection, a power adapter, and an external SSD of 120GB or higher. Now instead of using an SD card, we will be using an external SSD to install the operating system and store the media files. That being said, let's get started by downloading the Raspberry Pi image hub. Open your browser and navigate to the following link. Download and install the Raspberry Pi Imager. I'm using a Windows 11 computer, so I selected the corresponding version. Once installed, open the software and connect the external SSD through the USB 3 port on your computer. Now choose OS and select Raspberry Pi or other, then opt for Raspberry Pi OS Lite 64-bit. Now select storage and choose your SSD. Before clicking on write, let's tweak some settings. Click on the settings gear icon. Set hostname to identify the Raspberry Pi 4 on a network. For example, I'm going to set it as a Raspberry Pi 4. Also enable SSH to connect to Raspberry Pi from your remote computer. Choose Use Password Authentication and set the username and password. For example, Pi4 as the username. You can enable Wireless LAN and provide a valid SSID and password for automatic Wi-Fi connection after each reboot. But it's recommended to use an Ethernet cable for internet connection. Now set the local and click on Save. Now click on write and the software will flash the Raspberry Pi OS through the SSD. Now this will take a few seconds. After completion, close the software and eject the SSD. Now reconnect the SSD back to your computer. You will find that bootfs have mounted where the Raspberry Pi OS boot files are located. Now look for the config.txt and add the following lines at the bottom to overclock the Raspberry Pi 4. So please ensure you have a proper CPU cooler installed before overclocking to avoid any issues. Overclocking the Raspberry Pi 4 may improve transcoding and enhance the video playback performance. We go ahead and connect the SSD or external drive along with the power supply and Ethernet cable and turn on the Raspberry Pi. To connect to the Raspberry Pi from a remote computer, open command prompt on your Windows computer and type ping-4 Raspberry Pi 4.local. Raspberry Pi 4 is the hostname that I set for my Raspberry Pi. Now, running this command will display the IP address associated with that hostname on the network, like 192.168.111, which is the current IP address assigned by my Wi Fi router. Now, I'm going to use this IP address to connect to Raspberry Pi. In the command prompt, type ssh pi4 ampersand and the IP address. Replace the IP address with your Raspberry Pi's IP, then enter the password when prompted. Voila, we have connected to Raspberry Pi 4. Go ahead and type this command to update the package list. Then edit the SSH config file to increase the idle timeout for SSH connection. Type this command and uncomment these two lines. Now set client allow interval to 1 million to keep the SSH connection active for a few hours. Once this is done, save the changes.
Now head over to this URL in your browser to set up Casa OS. I copy this line and paste it on the command prompt. Casa OS is an open source project focused on delivering a personal cloud experience and uses the power of Docker to run various applications like Plex, Jellyfin, Home Assistant, and more. This installation will take a few minutes, so please be patient. Once it's done, open a new tab in your browser and type the IP address of your Pi to access the Casa OS web UI. Set the username and password in Casa OS. And congratulations, you have successfully set up a Casa OS on the Raspberry Pi. Now choose files. By default, Casa OS automatically creates a sample server with folders like movies, music, and TV shows, which you can use them to store media content and link with Jellyfin library. I'm going to drag and drop some movie files here. Once it's done, exit the files application. They go to the App Store and Casa OS and search for Jellyfin to install it. Once installed, go back to the main page of Casa OS and launch the Jellyfin application. It's time to configure the Jellyfin media server. Go ahead, choose the language, then click on Next. Set up a user account to access the Jellyfin server. Now choose to add a media library. For now, I'm going to link the movies folder to the Jellyfin server. Now likewise, you can link music and TV show folders. Once it's done, click on Next and leave the defaults. Make sure you have enabled this option to allow remote connection to the Jellyfin server. Now click on Next and finish configuring Jellyfin. This will take you to the login panel and type the username and password to login. Now you can stream the content present inside the movies directory across multiple devices. This is the best media server that you can build with your content. Now, as you can see, this is the 4K 30 FPS footage that is playing with minor frame drops. It struggles a lot while playing 4K at 60 FPS. When it comes to 1080p video, it can play them without any frame drops on 6 screens and 720p video on 10 screens. It's time to set up the static IP address for your Raspberry Pi 4. If you want to set up a static IP address for your Raspberry Pi 4, it's recommended to do so through your Wi-Fi router by reserving the IP address permanently. However, if you prefer another method, you can head back to the command prompt and type this command to set the static IP address. You can simply rewrite the above lines. Modify the IP address. In my case, 192.168.111 is the desired one that I chose to use. In your case, the IP address series will be different. So follow the above statement as an example. After saving the changes and rebooting the Raspberry Pi 4, we should be able to ping the new static IP address. Now please note that using the router to set a static IP address is the preferred and more reliable method. Now within a network, you can simply type the IP address with the port number 8096 into any computer browser and it will open a Jellyfin media server. That's pretty much it. This is how you can set up a Jellyfin media server on Raspberry Pi 4 under 10 minutes. 
Check the description for more information. Thanks for watching my video. This has been KSK Ryle. I will see you in the next one.